Hi, Boomer fans. Welcome to this week's edition of Coach's Corner, proudly brought to you by Lucerne Investment Partners and Econ Financial. This week's guest is another Boomer favourite, a three-times WNBL champion, Australian Opal, Boomer captain, and just a fabulous human with the deadliest plat in the game. Welcome, Kayla George. Hello, Georgie. Hey, how are you, Riz? So good to see your face. You too. Sending We're missing all the love you guys down there. I oh, know, we're really missing your training. It's not the same without you on court, but we're not far away, hopefully. You've had a very different last few months to what we have down in our miserable winter Melbourne. Tell us where you're at, how you've spent the last few months. I've been up here in relatively normal conditions. Um, I mean, we have sanitizer everywhere. We have to sign into places. Um, and the ladies at Coles sometimes, or people at Coles aren't 1.5ing, which disappoints me. But other than that, it's been pretty good. Um, we've been uh, training on court again with contact for the last couple months. I'm training with Taipan's coach, Mike Kelly. He is amazing. He actually was coached by Guy Malloy back in the day too. So really cool little history there. Um, so I'm really enjoying my time working out with Mike. Um, I'm actually also playing a little bit of netball as well. But my theory behind that was it's another sweat session and it's also a team environment. I mean, you just said this is the longest you've actually been at home. Has there been a really nice side to that too? Oh, absolutely. Like watching my niece and nephews grow up, like um, you know, I actually babysit every Tuesday because um, my sister, super mum, is studying, playing netball and, you know, mum of three. So I, I babysit my 11-month-old Eli every Tuesday. Oh. So that is so much fun. He loves Auntie Kayla. So I'm really, really enjoying being around them. Whilst you've had this time at home, I guess this has been a fantastic opportunity for you to really invest in your businesses. You've got two businesses. You've got RNC and CG. Do you want to explain and give both of those a really good plug? And you've been doing so much with CG in particular with all the kids, which has been yeah. fabulous. Tell us all about them. So a quick spill on um, Remy and Coco. So it gives me a lot of um, creative time just to really um, figure out what direction I want the line, like the business to go in my apparel line, my candles and things like that. So I've actually had a lot of candle making time. I've done a few new collections, just waiting to kind of yeah, put it all together with some content and really just like smash my socials with it. And then with KaylaGeorge.com, essentially when I started the business before Corona in November last year, it was about um, an on and off court interaction um, with young athletes, young girls in particular that wanted to um, just yarn with me that just wanted to get to know me and what I've you know been blessed to be able to do in my career and some of my highs and lows and how I've dealt with them and just really engage with conversation with me honestly the impact that that had um, was incredible and it's really inspired me to keep going so now I've actually started um, my next program which has an international flavor uh, so I haven't actually said anything about this yet so this is you've got exclusive details on the oh, coach's no. corner so we've got over 20 athletes, elite female hoopers from around the world jumping in on Instagram chats with me that are pre-recorded. It was really cool to be able to, you know, share some of the stories from the people that I've been able to experience playing with and different cultures that I've been, you know, blessed to play in. And I feel like these young girls can really take what they want from those conversations and really you know, absorb that and take advantage of it all. Now, Opals, you touched on that before. This is just the most unbelievable situation where the Olympics gets postponed. Fortunately, only postponed. First time ever. <laughs> well, I know, you're all on this timeline. Tell us, firstly, how you felt when you got the news with everyone else that this that it was being postponed, when you, you kind of had everything planned out. How did you initially feel? Well, I think it was um, like all the athletes would have felt across the world. It was... Um, it was pretty hard to hear, but also you want the event to be safe and, you know, a good event, not concerned with other things like Corona. You don't want to, you don't want it to be overtaken by that. So understandably, you know, I, I understood that it needed to happen. The thought of waiting a whole nother year was a little bit um, interesting initially, but, you know, I'm always a glass half full kind of girl, you know, me risk. So um, I was like, all right, just gives us more time to, you know, sharpen up and get crisp and just be better and the goal hasn't changed um it's just given us a bit more more time to get ready i mean obviously your main focus now is getting ready for the upcoming wbl season but yep. mentally physically have there been any changes you've had to make to kind of think okay 2021's the year honestly i haven't tried to think about it so much because um it got a little bit overwhelming 
um, for the first little bit of time. And so I wrote some goals, um, which are very similar goals to what it would have been if the Olympics were on, um, to just to try and stay focused. I'm a morning person, so I'd wake up, walk my dogs, come back, lift weights. And now, because, you know, since the courts have been available the last few months, you know, go do my workout with Mike Kelly, come back, you know, do weights with my sister or whatever, and then, you know, start my day and then look at my phone. I don't look at my phone first because that's not the right way to go about it. Otherwise, you're stuck there scrolling. Exactly. So that's life advice. Life advice. Don't look at your phone until you finish your workout. Your role with Maddie as co-captains last season completely thrive on the role and working together. Tell us how yep. that, that role means to you, how you found it last season and moving forward. Honestly, Riss, I, I loved being co-captain with Mads last season. I like, um, well, the last chunk years, I've really felt like a bit of a leader out there anyway. Maddie and I, we didn't change anything of how we usually would be. We just kind of were fun. We were ourselves. We were accountable. We expected others to be accountable. Like, we were accountable. And culturally, like, on and off the floor, like, it just worked. Credit to you guys for the recruiting that the boomers do and bringing in amazing people. And it makes it a lot easier for us as the captains just to really um, be the captains and create a culture and help keep that culture. And the people that are brought into the club um, are just superhumans. Uh, and it's, it's a real joy to be able to work with and rock up to training every day and rock up to games every game time with, you know, the Boomer sisters. You would now be classified as a veteran of the league. How does that title sit with you? I'm 31 and I do not feel it. I feel like I'm probably in the best um, mind space of my career. Um, in my 20s, I was so concerned with what people thought of me, trying to prove everyone wrong, trying to prove everyone that I was good enough. Um, and it was the biggest waste of my mind ever. Um, I was still playing decent basketball, but, you know, I was playing in the WNBA, then coming back here, playing in the WNBA, playing it like, going all over life. I was full on flying everywhere all the time um, and never really had time to reflect on some of the really cool things that I was actually doing in my life. I just see the game in a way that, and I'm sure that you can appreciate this, like, you know, like the backdoor opportunities or the cut here or do that there or like, and I'm trying to teach these young girls, like, you know, don't just banana cut off me, cut in and use my screen. Like all these things that I've been coaching these young girls here in Cairns. Like, oh gosh, I'm turning into a coach. Honestly, the veteran tag, I don't act like a veteran. I'm certainly um, an immature veteran, <laughs> but I'll take it. You've been fortunate enough to travel the world doing what you do best and what you love most. And to lots of different countries and leagues. Is there a standout memory from you, for you, from all the different seasons and countries you played? Honestly, the biggest thing for me is like some of the, the people I've met along the way um, that I would still call my sisters now, um, that are actually part of my upcoming program. Um, you know, we stay connected. We, you know, yarn on social media. Thank goodness for social media. Phoenix, I met a, an amazing group of women while I was there off court as well, like my chaplain, I'm really close friends with now still. We speak almost every week, Marshall. Um, so yeah, the people I've met along the way, hands down, be all, everything. And speaking about all your different, um, where you're at with your career, the amazing achievements throughout, if you could look back on a younger you, what would be the advice you give yourself now? I'd say um, don't be concerned with what everyone else is doing. Don't be concerned about what they say. Your journey's different. You will succeed. You're going to be fine. Nickname? Georgie Girl. Favourite saying or word? Yeah, girl. <laughs> <laughs> Outside of basketball, what is your favourite thing to do? Um, taking the puppies to the park here in Kansas called Gumbora. It's like you probably see it on my Instagram stories all the time. It's like water. We get in the water. It's good recovery water. It's nice and fresh. The dogs love it. It's trees, forest, green. It's beautiful. Your fur babies, their names? Coco and Caesar. If you could choose any superpower, which would it be? <laughs> the first thing I thought of, which is not what I want to be though, but I, the first thing I thought of was the Tim Tam ads. <laughs> have a reoccurring thing of the Tim Tams from the genie but I don't want to be that I don't want to have all, I don't really like Tim Tams like that um they're nice on occasion your favorite basketball memory so far 
You can have um, my favorite basketball memory so far. Um, I'm going to give you two. My first WNBL championship was really, really great um, with the Towns of Fire back in 2015. And then also in 2018, um, in the semi final in Spain against Spain uh, to get into the gold medal game. We didn't obviously succeed in the gold medal game, but to guarantee ourselves a medal that 2018, after being a part of Rio. Um, and not meddling. That was a huge moment for us as the Opals, solidified us back into second spot in the world on the podium, silver medal, and really made us hungry coming into the Olympics whenever that is next year. And in the game in particular, with a few minutes to go, obviously Liz was smashing the game and they triple teamed her inside. Beck Allen passed to me on the wing. I hit a three with a couple minutes to go. And then I had a set of free throws. I think I had five points in a row or close together to really like help us in the last few minutes to be a part of that. And, and actually me personally be able to, you know, give to the scoreboard to really help us get over the line was um, something that I'll always remember. That, that three will always be. And I think of that three every time I'm on that side of the court in that same spot. I always think of that three. Body suit or singlet shorts? Body suit. Agree. Bring back the body suit. If you could invite one guest to dinner, who would it be? Uh, probably Chadwick, who just passed away two days ago, Black Panther. I think what he was about and his whole vibe, and he was a man of faith as well, and just watching a lot of his stuff over the last 24 hours, is, I would invite him. Favourite movie? Uh, well, I always say Bridesmaids because it's just a crack up, but anything Will Ferrell as well. Like, oh, I'm all for rom-coms or just like coms. Your signature dish that you can cook? Um, my sweet potato gnocchi with creamy tomato sauce, which is all plant-based. So your favourite food out of everything? Chocolate. Biggest pet peeve. Oh, okay. The first thing that comes to mind is when people are like, oh my gosh, I have to tell you something. Oh, what? Oh, I'll tell you later. <laughs> oh, drives me bonkers. Favorite emoji? Um, I use the cowboy hat emoji a lot, but I also like this emoji, you know, and it's like, <laughs> <laughs> with the red cheeks, like, Ooh! like that's my favorite one, as well as the cowboy hat emoji. I always love talking to you. Thank you for taking you the time too, yes. today. Please okay. work hard, look after that ankle, and we cannot wait to have you back in Melbourne with us very soon. So take care. And Me thank either. <laughs> thank you, honey. Appreciate you. All right. Thank you. We'll see you soon. Well, that's another edition of Coach's Corner. Don't forget to follow the Boomers on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn and YouTube for all updated news. Wishing you all a great week. We're almost there, Melbourne. Hang in there. See you next week.